Tessa from Ksenia's Guiding Star Astrology Wellness team here. I am the shamanic practitioner, shamanic healer on the team. And today I'm going to talk to you about shadow work. It's such an important, juicy topic and it's something that so many people are curious about, a little bit scared about, don't necessarily understand they need to do. And you know, this is where we heal. So a lot of the previous videos I've done on this channel have been more about the work I do with clients and what to expect in a session and some basic questions around shamanism that Ksenia and I covered in the original interview she did with me, because I think it's really important that you have an understanding of what it is you're booking in for if you choose to have a session with me. Um, however, my goal with these videos is to be helpful and give you tools and work on your spiritual and personal development and healing, you know, in your own time. So this is the sort of videos I'll be making most often, unless I feel called to do something specifically about shamanism. So when we planned out the videos, I said I have to get one about shadow work in there because it's such an important topic. So what is the shadow? So the term the shadow was coined by Carl Jung. Um, but of course, even if he was the one who coined it in modern day in sort of psychology, psychotherapy terms, it's, you know, he wasn't the first person to observe that there are aspects of humans that, you know, are kind of shoved away or pushed down or that we don't really want to deal with within ourselves. And I'd like to think that the reason why everything in shamanism is about balance between dark and light, you know, even when we make a prayer offering, every element has to be in balance. And I was just having a conversation about this with my teacher a few days ago when we were, he was doing the tutoring with me, where he was saying, you know, anything that comes into reality is subject to the law of this division of, you know, masculine, feminine, light, dark, up, down, you know, all these different ways that we categorize things. So when something's manifest, these laws apply, right? So of course, the light and dark within humans are part of that. And um, Jung, you know, wrote extensively about it, but it's not to say that, you know, he was the first person to ever noticed the shadow. I'd like to think that, you know, as I said, this is uh, the shadow and, and noticing this would be why the shamans 40,000 years ago you know, understood that everything has to be in balance and harmony. And, you know, I think that's true for every spiritual practice. It's all about coming back to your center. So the shadow is the part of you that you've disowned, the part of you that you believe isn't there or you've pushed very far out of your awareness. And, you know, Eckhart Tolle talks about the pain body. So it's that heaviness we carry of all the wounds and things that we've sort of shoved in the basement and closed the door on, right? So we think we've dealt with it because we're pushing it out of our awareness and with years, with a lot of trauma or as we grow up and experience things in life and we get hurt and so forth, or we do things we're not proud of, or we do something or act out of integrity or out of you know, what we perhaps have been told is the way we should behave, which isn't necessarily true. You know, you might have had a very strict upbringing forcing you into a belief system that actually is very far from the truth. But then you're acting out of integrity with what you were taught, even if perhaps what you were taught is not correct. Um, and then you're going to push that into the, the shadow. You know, you're denying parts of yourself. You're disowning them. You're shoving them away, essentially. And, you know, it's a protection mechanism. We're doing this so that we can try and sort of, um, you know, focus on all the good in ourselves, but it's not gone just because it's out of sight, right? It's like the plastic in the ocean. You may not see it, but one day, you know, you're going to notice it when a dolphin gets its face stuck in it, right? So <laughs> it's a really weird analogy, but the point is nothing is gone. There was actually, I was just talking to, uh, to, about this with someone the other day. When I was a child in the summers, there used to be these summer shows on for the school holidays. It would be sort of for an hour every morning at 9 a.m. and it'd be a certain theme and things every year. So one year it was about recycling and these people were working on, you know, a, 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 what do you call them, a tip where you leave the rubbish. <laughs> and they were saying there was this song, you know, nothing disappears, everything is still there. And that's very much true with the shadow. So I don't subscribe to the belief that we're broken or that, you know, we're completely cracked. I believe everyone is able to heal. And I don't think healing is about seeing ourselves as broken. It's more about bringing ourselves into balance. So if we've had a lot of trauma or never worked with our inner world, never done shadow work, never done healing, don't have a good self-care routine, 
you know, there might be a very chaotic inner world we have. And if our inner world is chaotic, the external world is going to be chaotic, right? Because we're projecting, we're manifesting, we're creating our reality. A lot of the time, at least. So, you know, to me, it's more about chaos that needs to be brought into balance and um, I actually brought oh where I put it on I forgot I thought I had it in my hand but I'm actually wearing it so it reminded me when I was thinking about that before this video it reminded me of the uh, Shekana I don't know if you can see that the Shekana cross which is the Andean cross so it represents the the um, lower middle and upper world but then it's got that hole in the middle and our goal as humans is to strive to get back in the middle into the center it's the same with a medicine wheel or like the pagan wheel you know it's all about balance everything shifts and cycles but we're coming back into balance so that's where we want to go we want to go into balance it's not to say that you're you're you know a part of you goes a bit out here it doesn't mean it's gone and broken and, and lost it just needs to be reintegrated so shadow work is essentially healing through integrating the aspects of yourself that you've refused to look at that you've disowned that you've pushed away you know memories behavior beliefs um, and sometimes even things about yourself that are good you know the light shadow can be things like you don't see your own beauty you don't see that you're part of source you don't see that you're a divine being you don't see that you have love in your heart and abilities and creativity you know all these things that you might appreciate in other people you know when we're projecting a dislike or appreciation of someone that's part of what's within us because otherwise we wouldn't be able to perceive it so when you're admiring someone it's because that's an aspect of you there's a part of you that holds that just like when you're projecting a lot of dislike onto someone there's usually a part of you that holds an aspect of that and even if you don't believe that to be true it's an incredibly helpful way to go about life and understanding yourself and taking responsibility for your actions your behaviors and you know towards yourself and others so i think through shadow work we can become very self-aware so essentially this the, essentially essentially the shadow is the aspects of you that you've pushed out now this shadow isn't gone it's going to come back and sort of go knock 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 hello do you remember me we had this conversation last year and now i'm reminding you again right so it's going to pop up and you're going to be triggered and i know a lot of people hate i shouldn't say hate but dislike the word trigger because lately you know through all the spiritual development the world's going through a lot of the time the word triggered is used a lot as soon as someone has an opinion you know it might be saying people might say are you triggered and then people get upset so i understand that you know not everything is about being triggered however if we have a strong reaction to anything it is a trigger so it is something we need to work on uh, you know, if we're in peace and balance and harmony, it doesn't mean we never have an emotion or that, you know, we're just kind of going about our day uh, completely not reacting to anything. But when you have a very strong opinion or strong reaction or strong dislike, you know, uh, or you're very, very hard on yourself, there's something there. It's your shadow coming saying, hello, can we talk now? You know? <laughs> so it doesn't go anywhere and eventually if this pain body and this shadow grows very big it's going to wreak so much havoc in your life because think about it if you believe that you're creating your reality and if you're believing that your vibration is going to attract the vibration to you that you you want in your life the people you want in your life the situation the experiences the feelings in your life and then you're operating with this kind of dark passenger that you're unaware of that's constantly sort of knocking on the door and and uh, coming up you're going to be projecting that so you're going to be attracting things that helps you resolve that but it's going to come from the external world which is you know and you're going to run into to situations that constantly trigger you so of course i don't think it's that simple you know i believe the, com the, the being human having emotions have so many other aspects to take into consideration life lessons uh, you know, the, the things that we've already manifested in our lives, you know, when we change, it's not necessarily changing the external world right away. Things we have to experience, the way society is set up, you know, there's a lot of things um, beyond this. But as your daily practice and as you grow on your spiritual path, shadow work is essential because it's about self-awareness and understanding yourself and 
releasing the heavy burden you're carrying. They're trying to constantly warn you, but essentially wreaking havoc in your life, uh, as opposed to when you free yourself from that. I don't necessarily think we're ever free of having some kind of shadow, but you get to a point where you're so aware of it that your first response when you have a strong reaction to something or someone is you turn it on yourself and you say, why am I reacting this way? What is it within me that's really triggered here? And then you begin to live your life that way. So it's not that we don't necessarily feel it or experience it. It's more how we then choose to react. So um, what else did I want to say about the shadow? Um, you know, there's no shadow without light. So we illuminate the shadow and the shadow itself to me suggests that there is light because otherwise how could there be a shadow, right? I thought that's a really sweet little metaphor to remind ourselves of. But at the start of your spiritual journey and your healing journey and your personal development, it can be very painful to do shadow work. And I'll get to what how that might look in a second. Um, because there might be so many aspects of yourself that you've disowned. Um, you know, things you're ashamed of, things that you've said or ways you've hurt people or... Um, things about yourself that you just don't like or perhaps ways you used to act 10 years ago and if you haven't made peace with that and forgiven yourself and come at it from a, a perspective of compassion you're going to be shoving that in the junk drawer and it's going to be ending up in your shadow and then your subconscious is going to constantly be warning you about it saying oh you know we need to talk about this there's something going on here so to me, shadow work essentially comes back to becoming self-aware so that we can begin to release the heavy pain body we sometimes carry. That's healing, right? And the other aspect of that is when we have new situations, we stop, we act, sorry, we stop and we pay attention to our own projections. So it's a daily ongoing awareness exercise, essentially. However, um, at the start of your journey, you may need to actually do proper shadow work, like literally working through what's there. So uh, let me check my notes quickly. Was there something else I had to say before I go into that? Um, no. So what happens if we ignore the shadow? I feel like I kind of covered that in what I've said already. You know, it'll come up in other ways. It'll come up in us judging, projecting, criticizing, feeling very upset, going on rants on social media, you know, that sort of thing. So it's not gone. It's just out of your awareness. And it's kind of like a spirit just gave me a really good metaphor right then. It's kind of like if you had this massive dangerous animal in your house and you know it's there, but you're not going to feed it. You're also not going to sort of try and get it back to its natural habitat. It's just going to put it in you know, one of the spare rooms and you're gonna close the door, but you're not gonna lock the door. And you know, with time, this animal might figure out how to get out of there. So you're gonna chase it around the house and put it back in again, instead of, of you know, releasing it back to where it's meant to be, instead of trying to keep it in your house hidden, right? So, <laughs> thank you, spirit. That was a very funny analogy. Um, so it's very important, essentially, and it can be very painful. But I think this is, you know, what I always I think I've stressed this in past videos that healing is not about just sitting there feeling great. That's a part of healing, you know, experiencing beautiful energy and spirit and the remarkable beauty that's out there and support that's out there from spirit and healing in that way. But a big part of it is clearing out the pain that you're carrying the judgment, the resentment, the lack of compassion, whether it's for yourself or for other people or for the world or, you know, all of those things. And that's very painful. But and sometimes when we clear it, it can lead to a dark night of the soul, which I won't go into here. But it's, you know, a very um, profound experience of, of all this pain that we've carried. Um, and sometimes... Um, you know, we just have to sit through the pain of releasing it and it's going to be different for everyone. And I'm not saying you do it all in one day, you know, you can start with these self-awareness things that are not so scary because they're not that hidden. If you're having reactions to, for example, let's say someone at your local coffee shop that always triggers you, 
You know, that's an easy one to start with. What is it with this person that's upsetting me so much? And you've got to keep asking till you get to what it is within you, what fear, what pain, what memory, what aspect of you is being hurt, challenged, reactive here, right? It's not about the other person. If it was, then we would all be having that situation every day because there'll be plenty of, of that, you know, sort of person out there. But is everyone else in the coffee shop also triggered by this person? No. So it's something that you're reacting to. It doesn't necessarily mean that the other person's behavior is wonderful or, you know, even socially acceptable, but it doesn't matter because when you come into full center, you're not going to be triggered by that. You're going to be able to see past that, right? So shadow work is self-awareness. So how do you start? So to me, um, there are so many different tools you can use. You know, if you like to journal, you can journal. If you like to meditate on a concept, you can meditate on it, you can think about it. But at some point, you are going to have to ask yourself those questions that I just shared. You know, why is this? What is it within me? And that's an ongoing thing. Uh, and it takes really raw honesty. It takes you to be will and fearlessness. It takes you to be willing to see yourself for who you truly are. Not through the filters and things that's been applied or that you've applied, but through to the core of who you really are and both the light and the dark within you. So if you've been shoving a lot of stuff away for a long time, that can be very painful. So you can do it in little steps. As I said, start with things that are obvious, constant cycles, constant patterns, the same things triggering you. If they're happening all the time, you're probably somewhat aware and it's not going to be as hard. Does that necessarily bring you to your childhood and childhood traumas? Not necessarily. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it's things that happen later in life or, you know, from a spiritual perspective, it might even be a life lesson and a past life. But it's through understanding what it is that's happening and why you're reacting the way you're reacting, you can begin to um, change the reaction. So number one is awareness. And also awareness and analyzing it with compassion, like I said, with love for yourself, but with brutal honesty. And the tools you use, you can choose yourself. But the, it's, the awareness is the start. And then, as I said, you can journal, you can do ceremony, you could paint, you could sing, you could just sit with it. You know, but it's important if you're feeling things building up in your body that you're somehow releasing them. So I always suggest to work with the breath. Whew releasing it into the earth with to light or into a stone ask permission before you use the stone if you're going to pick one say is it okay if i borrow you for this will you help me transmute this energy you know in shamanism everything has life including a stone so we're not just going to go pick a stone and say i'm going to use you and then i'm going to toss you over there you know we make sure we ask permission if you don't know how to ask permission assume that you know use your imagination listen if you don't get a strong no it's probably okay you know um so you or you can use uh, a match whew, blow it into the match and burn the match but when you're working with fire i would say be very careful not to put too many things into the fire because it's a very powerful energy to alchemize and um you know clear things and release things so if you were to for example uh, you know, have a fire pit in your backyard and then start to show in, you know, 30 different shadow aspects of yourself that you're wanting to release, it's going to wreak havoc in your life. Not necessarily, it depends. If you have strong intention and you do it in a ceremonial way, it probably would. If you're just throwing them in there, uh, you know, doing the steps but not actually being committed to it or in a kind of open st state of mind when you do it, maybe nothing will happen. But a little warning, working with fire can be very transformational and very intense so i would start with something smaller like you know journaling and stuff that i've talked about here and you might even you know look up i'm sure there's um meditations and stuff that takes you on you know a little shadow work journey so there's plenty of information out there this video is more you know explaining why it's so important that we do this so you become aware of you know one aspect at a time starting with things that are not too traumatizing you begin to work on releasing it and understanding them and then you apply it time and time again in your life when you run into that situation so for me it would go something like situation happens pause how am I going to react here as opposed to and then choosing how you respond to that as opposed to something happens reaction from the shadow right very different we're very reactive 
a lot of the time we're going around on autopilot, especially if you haven't done a lot of healing and spiritual work, and we're just responding to the day. You know, not just in terms of what other people say and do to us during the day, but you know, if we don't set our day up in the morning by before, you know, we look at social media, videos, uh, news, phone calls, if we don't kind of take a moment to center ourselves and decide what day we're going to have, we're going to be reactive. We're going to be responding to things all day that are thrown at us. Um, and, you know, more than ever before, because we're taking in so much information, you know, and we're so unaware of our shadow. Of course, not everyone. Some people watching this video might have been doing shadow work for 30 years. And in that case, why are you watching the video? <laughs> you should be teaching me. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm talking from the perspective of you don't know what shadow work is because I want this to be helpful to everyone that might need it. So um, the self-awareness and then pausing and choosing the response. So you may not necessarily get rid of the trigger right away, but you choose to respond differently. So now you're already shifting your reality. You're shifting the output. You're shifting, you're not shifting the input, but you're shifting the output. And that's going to create change in your life. But in that pause in between, which reminds me of the pause between breaths. You know, when you take a breath, There's that split second between the breaths where you pause, where you're not breathing in, you're not breathing out, you're not doing anything. I can't remember where this is coming from, maybe from Buddhism, but either way, that's the sort of analogy of shadow work in the day to day. You're stopping before you respond so that you're in control. Um, so it's a lot about noticing and but also, you know, you might then need to do some deeper work. Like I said, you know, meditation, hypnosis, you know, self-hypnosis tracks, stuff like that. So very important to do shadow work. I'm just thinking, I'm going to pause this for a second and see if there's anything I've forgotten that I needed to say. All right. The last thing I wanted to share is some of the ways that shadow work works for me nowadays. So, you know, as I said, most of the time it's about being aware. I straight away say, you know, what is it in me that's causing me to react so strongly to this? And Sometimes I'll, I'll miss that step because I'm human. Sometimes I'll just react and I might have had a really bad day and I just react to something and I might tell a friend about it. But because most of the people that I've called into my life are quite open minded and spiritual, they will then say, what is it in you that's triggering this response? You know, maybe it's time to do some shadow work, Tessa. So, you know, this is the annoying thing about being very, you know, living a very spiritual life. You can't get away with anything. You can't even fool yourself to sort of not look at your shadow because it's going to be there. It's going to come up and it's wonderful. It's raw. It's honest. It's brutal. It's transparency. And when you're transparent, there isn't much for people to hook into because it's transparent. There's there's nothing hidden. So it is in your best interest to really learn deep shadow work. And um, in my life at the moment, so mostly it's just the self-awareness day to day. But when I have something that's really bothering me, I work through, of course, all the ceremonies and um, so forth that I do because I'm on the shamanic path. So we have a lot of ongoing work, ongoing ceremonies and things we do. I do, um, if you've worked with me, I might have given you this shadow work practice actually, which is sort of going into like a basement and finding what's there that my teacher gave to me. So I've done it with a few of you who might be watching this video perhaps. Um, that's one of the things I will use. So sometimes I actually take myself through a process and sometimes I do that without having been triggered because there's always more to uncover. And there's always other layers to healing. So we find that at the start of, of a healing process, you're fixing things that's kind of up here. It's, you know, you know what you're triggered by. Um, but then a year later, something from that kind of pool of things might come back because you're ready for another lesson of that, a deeper understanding of it. Uh, and I think I referred to this in an earlier, earlier video where, for example, I had the words kindness and compassion. And one day it just sort of dropped in and I understood a different layer of that, a different, deeper aspect of, wow, that's what compassion is. That's what kindness, what kindness is. So to me, healing is sometimes not necessarily about a ton of different things. It's just deeper layers of the same thing. And then it becomes more about growth. But it's, it's always about bringing ourselves back to the center, being still, operating from the heart space, from love, from compassion, from compassion with ourselves and not being reactive to everything that's around us, you know, because if we're going to react to everything around us, you know, there's no end to it. 
you, it, the world is not in your control. Other people is not in your control. So if you get running around constantly reacting, it's going to be a very scattered life, right? So um, very important to do our inner work and understanding our triggers. And, you know, the triggers will lead you if you're willing to face them with honesty and compassion and truth and do the work. You know, they will lead you to the greatest peace and the greatest aspects of healing that you can achieve. You know, there are things in my life where it's taken me a long time to get past something and I might have, um, I'm not going to go into the specifics, but there is uh, someone I was following who I found quite triggering. Someone I used to read the material that was put out there from. And I knew that there was truth in it, but it was very painful for me to listen to because I didn't quite agree or I agreed, but I felt hurt or, you know, that sort of thing. And I stuck with it and it took a few years, but eventually that pain was gone because I had worked through my reactions to the material and I understood the value in what was being said and the value in what was being shared and I could integrate it and feel peace. So it's not necessarily a quick process, especially when you're coming into bigger picture stuff, but it brings you peace, just like fearlessness and expanding what you're comfortable with brings you peace, which is kind of linked to this, right? So you know, um, I can't remember if I've mentioned this in the previous videos, but I used to make the example of um, I'm terrified of cable cars. Uh, the other year I was kind of ended up in a situation where I had to go in a cable car in a mountain. <laughs> and I was so scared. I was so scared that any time someone tried to sort of film or move within the car, I almost like freaked out. Um, but I did it because I said, I'm never going to let fear get in the way of me doing something. So I did it. And then like six months later, I said, you know what? It's a beautiful day off. I'm going to go and ride a cable car <laughs> just to, to, you know, put myself in that uncomfortable situation. And I did. And now it's not that I would necessarily do it because I enjoy it. But my mind has now registered that I didn't die the first two times. So, you know, the third time I'm not going to be as scared. So I've expanded my comfort zone. Uh, you know, making videos would have terrified me 10 years ago. Um, and the first video I ever made was really bad. Not that, please don't write in the comment that this one's still very bad. <laughs> but my point is, you know, we grow through facing fears. And that's part of shadow work as well. So... I hope this has been helpful. Um, you know, what I've given you in this video is a good start and then you can go deep into it. You can, you know, study Jung, you can look into, <clears throat> you know, balance within different spiritual traditions. <coughs> Excuse me. You can, you know, set up your own practices around how you're going to do this. But most of all, it's simple. Become self-aware, you know, change the reactive response and choose a different way and understand, ask yourself, why am I feeling like this? What am I doing? And so forth. And life is going to be so much more peaceful and so much easier. Much love. I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. If you want to book a session with me, we'll share the link below. Um, head over to guidingstarastrology.com. Look at the wellness team part of the site and you'll find me there and um, enjoy your inner work and your integration work if you are doing shadow work. So, ma, folks.